Hello everyone, welcome back to the Git Essential series and today we are going to learn how to create a .dot uh, .git ignore file and how to tell git what not to track and what to track. Second, commit messages convention, how to write messages that actually help your team to understand what exactly has been performed as part of some specific commit. So this might seem very small details but they make massive difference in real projects when you're going to work in an enterprise. So let's dive in for our last video. So what you shouldn't track, why you shouldn't track everything as part of your GitHub repository or as part of your Git code. The main point of this slide is to highlight the problems with tracking and committing everything in a repository. Bloated repository size can lead to huge download uh, times for your project when you're going to go ahead and clone any specific repository and which is inefficient. Storing sensitive information like API keys and passwords in your repository poses serious security risk so you can go ahead and actually add that as an ignorance in your git ignore file merge conflicts are common in generated files that shouldn't be committed as part of your uh, specific git and platform specific file can confuse and clutter your repository for your teammates and dependency like node modules folder should be downloaded not committed as they contain thousands of unnecessary file and if and everyone is going to download uh, if i am going to go ahead and push the entire node.js files which is required to run the program the repository becomes too heavy so the best practice is not to push it just have it on your local machine and you can do that by using dot git ignore file so what is dot git ignore file which you use in your git so it is a special file that tells git which files and folders to ignore when tracking changes in your project it lists patterns of files and folders that should not be tracked by git when you're performing a commit uh, towards your uh, repository or towards the github when you're pushing the changes the dot ignore file lives in the root directory of your folder this is very important to uh, remember it should be in the root directory of your folder creating a dot ignore file is one of the first thing you should do when you're going to create a new project so when you go and create a new repository over here when even if when i say I want to create if I go over here and say uh, repositories and if I go ahead and say new see over here by default it is asking you that it should add a git ignore file yes or no because this is one of the mandatory requirements that a good professional developer would follow as part of his day to day activity that he's performing once you have a git ignore file setup it will continue to benefit you throughout the life of the project that you have developed and once your project progresses you would automatically understand that which uh, extra files you don't want to track you can keep them adding on your git ignore and once you have added from that point onwards that file would not be added and the file name is just literally dot git ignore it starts with a dot which makes it a hidden file so Creating a dot ignore file is very simple. As I said, you you can go ahead and use the commands, these commands to create from the terminal or when you're creating your GitHub uh, project at that time also, as I showed you, you can at the time of creation of the project itself, you can go ahead and create it. Now, once you create what all things you mention as part of your git ignore file, you ignore the module folders. So for example, if you say the node module folder, it is in GVs many a times when you're downloading it. So we will just say that we want to ignore this folder. If you want to ignore any folder, you can just mention it like this and hashtag for the comments. Then if you say star dot log, whatever log files are present inside your specific project, it is going to ignore that log file also. So star is a character which says all the log files available. Then dot env. Any environment variables available, you don't want it uh, to be pushed on GitHub. It is good for you locally. Keep it and just say .env. And uh, if you want to ignore the operating system files, you can just say .ds store, uh, which would go ahead and ignore it while you are going to perform the push. Then let's understand the common .ignore patterns that usually professionals follow. So they follow in this format. So first they comes the dependency where the node modules for JavaScript or vendor for PHP or Ruby, uh, the packages that we download, we can ignore that so that it is never committed as part of our push that we are performing. Second is the environment variable. Any file containing API keys, data, database password or secret must be ignored as part of it. 
So over here, you can see environment variable, environment local, and the secret files also I have added over here, which you should not push. Third comes the build outputs. So compiled code, distributed folders, and executables, these are generated from your specific source code and it is required to run on your local machine. So no need to push it on the Git. Whenever somebody is going to run it, it is automatically going to get created and used. Then comes the operating system specific file like DS store on Mac or thumbs.db on Windows. You can ignore this too. And fifth comes the ID configuration files uh, in dot VS code, dot IDE and dot swap. So these are all the files which get generated as part of your uh, project that you are creating. So you can ignore these files too. Now, uh, language uh, specific templates you should refer. So for example, right now I gave you an example uh, which was not specific, uh, which was specific to Node.js and other languages too. But if you go to GitHub and just search for Git Ignore, you will get a list of language specific Git Ignore files that you can use. So let's try to go ahead and see this Git Ignore uh, URL. If I go ahead and say, this specific and hit enter you are going to see a list of git ignore files see this is for uh different different this by android angular if i search for python see python git ignore file whatever you want this is the list of git ignore files which is actually uh the file that you can use as a template and you can modify it accordingly so this is one repo in which you get all the git ignores for all the languages so over here you can see there are uh, different different kinds of uh, languages available and for each language you have a template available you can use any of them from the collection of dot git ignore templates so this uh, github actually provides a collection of git uh, ignore templates for various programming language and frameworks as we saw and these templates cover common files and directories that should be ignored when using git when you're a starter it is difficult for you to understand which all files you are you have to ignore so you can use a template go to github re, uh, repository that i just mentioned and you can get the template from there you can simply copy the entire template and paste it in your projects dot ignore file and this ensures you have a comprehensive git ignore setup from the start of your project saving your time effort and the size that you are pushing onto your project so templates, as we saw, are available. You can use it. And these are also templates for development. There are also template templates for development tools like Unity, Xcode, and Android Studio 2. So use these templates, which is going to help you to keep your Git repository clean and organized. Now, let's talk about the commit messages. What are bad commit messages and what are good commit messages? So bad commit messages are vague, lazy, or meaningless. So for example, if I say git commit, message fix it tells you nothing fix what what are you fixing over here and if i use updates so what did i update over here if i say stuff so any and any random letter this is a useless thing so in next six months you are looking forward through and history trying to find when a bug was introduced these messages are really worthless so good uh, messages that you should use is for example see over here fix so instead of fix i am saying fixed login button alignment on the mobile app that I have been creating. Then I added a password reset functionality. That was the update. The stuff, instead of that, I would say remove deprecated API endpoints. And this is how you should actually write your commit messages, which is easy for your teammates and for you to understand when you're going back to your code after six months. And professional team follows commit message conventions. So the most popular is, the, uh, uh, is this, which is uh, type that is description new feature fix docs so let me explain each of them one by one so type description format starts with a type uh, the categorization the change or the new feature bug fixes or docs for documentation and then a brief description you give keep the first line under 50 characters so it displays well in the logs if you are going to give the first line of your commit very big it is not going to display properly keep that short and if you need to give more information you can explain that in the description in detail that what exactly has been performed as part of this specific commit and not every commit needs a long description but complex changes deserves explanation some teams use tools like enforce these uh, conventions automatically like when you're not putting a proper so they have a enforcer which is going to check and it is going to tell you that the commit is not going to be performed till the time you're not going to have description 
but it is a best practice that when you are going to write the description try to keep the short description under 50 characters and in long description make sure you add what changed why it changed and any side effects like we were added adding in our release notes and that wraps up the session for today uh, if you enjoyed the session and want me to uh, keep uh, and want to keep learning step by step make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the upcoming tutorials thank you for watching and i will see you not in the next video in the next series so bye for now